Welcome to Conscious Co-Creation, straight talk about the mind, body, business, and spirit. And I'm really excited today, because today I have the beautiful Kelly Orchard. And we're going to be talking about some wonderful things, because she just came from a conference that she's going to share with us, that she got some wonderful ahas from. So, and I'm going to laugh, because we just had some wonderful conversations before. So I'm going to turn it over to Kelly. Oh, no. <laughs> well, you know, Carly, thank you so much for having me again on your program. You know, we uh, I just got back from what's called the evolution of psychotherapy. And as you know, I'm a, I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist here in the state of California. And this is sort of like the biggest psychotherapy conference in the world, over 8,000 therapists, mental health professionals, psychologists, uh, clinical social workers, counselors, uh, any mental health professional um, is invited to attend this kind of event and so it was there was a ton of people there and um, for me you know like I was just sharing with you earlier for me what was really great about going was that you know we get so in depth and involved in our day-to-day -day tasks you know whether we're building a business or we're you know we're kind of caught up in the minutia of you know every day you get up and you have certain goals that you have laid out for the day phone calls you have to make clients you've got to see uh, you know some sort of new product you're trying to develop well I'm, I, I get caught up in that too well for this particular uh, period of you know these five days that I was at this conference I was able to pull myself away from my regular work my daily tasks even my telephone and a lot of my social media and just immerse myself in this field of mental health and what was wonderful was kind of kind of like going back to school this conference was all about all different offerings so whatever you know methods you were choosing that you were wanted to learn or that you're working in and wanted to improve your skills upon or a subject matter that interested you you had a plethora of you know either lectures conversations um, or workshops uh, that you could attend and I just got back from it and it was a really good time and I learned a lot and spent a lot of money on uh, purchasing books and acquiring new knowledge and information which is something that I always encourage you know my clients to do as well especially in this field realm of mind body spirit the more we learn the the more knowledge we get and the more we develop our brains and then the more we develop our brain, the more we're able to process everything else that's going on around us in the world. And so it was a really great experience. What I'd like to add to that is that it's very important. Obviously, I know that right now you're still in the high of it all, and you're still processing, and you're really excited. It is very important, I think, for everybody to take self-time to go educate ourselves. The other piece to that, of course, is once we get home, to take the time to integrate what we've learned and then the most important part of all is to apply what we've learned. It is so important not to just go spend money and not to just put the books on the shelf, to take the time to really read the material, to apply the material, and then to practice the material. Would you not say that is very important? Oh, absolutely. In fact, um, I, like you said, you know, we, you and I were actually sort of, you know, having little Twitter chats and Facebook tw uh, chats on while I was at the conference and kind of, I was like, oh man, I'm learning so much. But once I got home, I did need to take some time to absorb and just to let my brain just kind of like <laughs> uh, react to the reverb, you know, just kind of like and focus on the material that I chose to um, expose myself to and let it sink in and then get acclimated and I've spent the last couple of days actually like you were saying applying what I took home from this conference to some of the workshops and coaching programs and things that I'm going to be you know starting to implement in 2014 so you're right that is absolutely key it's like I am all for learn 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 because that's how you gain new knowledge but you can gain all the knowledge in the world if you don't apply it what good is it so what what are let's start with day one what would be some of the biggest takeaways you got from day one well, day one, I, I went to a, uh, a three-hour kind of lecture workshop on the brain. It was the, the author was um, Daniel Siegel, 
who is a PhD, he's an MD, and he has some specialties in, you know, he works with like teenage brains and, you know, and it's really, <laughs> it's really hard for me to sort of, you know, like explain what he does, but he, t he talked about the brain as if it was, you know, your hand. So it's like, so if your hand was like this and your brain is actually folded around like this. So here's your brain stem, folds down the med in the cortex, and it's like that. So your brain is actually shaped like your hand. And then he took it and he basically, he just kind of explained all the different, you know, features of the hand and how everything is mapped out. And we can change so much of our current lives by thought processes and changing our physiology because what happens is that, you know, we're, we're controlled by, well, we aren't controlled. There are billions and trillions of neurons in our brains. And when we have any kind of thought or any kind of reaction to anything, whether it's, you know, happiness, fear, sadness, you know, what, whatever the emotion is, whatever the reaction is, it's creating maps in our brain and the brain is remembering, the neur neurons are wiring together. And so the more, so it's like the, the more one behavior, the one reaction continues, the more the brain is wiring that way. We are already pre, predetermined for the negativity, you know, so we automatically have this voice inside of our, inside of our heads. We always think it's like, I'm not worthy, uh, nobody likes me, nobody understands me, and this is our internal dialogue. Well, by changing that internal dialogue, you can actually rewire your brain for more positive interactions. And it was very fascinating. This was a three-hour deal, and it's like, I am not an MD. I do not to pretend to be an MD. I did go out and I bought his book so that I could read it and understand more about it. I've been following the brain science for quite some time now, for a few years, you know, reading different books. But So this one was one that was really interesting for me to go to. He had no slides. He had no lecture notes or anything. He just went on and on and on, even in the midst, I think there's like 2,000 people just mesmerized by what he is sharing about brain science. And that was really cool. So out of all that three hours of lecturing, what was one of the biggest takeaways from that for you? What, what impacted you the most out of those three hours? I think how he, he basically, how he kind of took apart the brain and, and showed it how you know, our hand, you know, by folding our hand that you can get the shape of the brain and seeing how, how so interconnected it is as if this was your spine and this was your, your brain stem, you know, and how it folds over like that so you can fold it up and then you can really see where all of the pathways go and how our brain can relearn. So the, the thing that was very interesting, so, so wherever cells die in our brain, new cells are being born. And our brains, no matter what kind of brain trauma or brain damage or, or negative thinking, stinking thinking, we always have the capacity to repair it. Our brain has that capacity to retrain, rewire, re, refocus. It takes practice. A lot of it is biological. But you can also train, you know, retrain your brain to go in a different direction. And I really love that because so many of my clients I know and probably of you who are seeking this whole mind, body, spirit, you know, concept for their lives need to understand the science of what the brain actually does. And that, you know, the, the thoughts that you have are actually things that are affecting the, the chemicals and the neurons and the transmitter, neurotransmitters in your brain. And you can rewire it so that you can pull yourself out of that depression. You can change your thoughts from negative to positive. And you can, you can learn this. It's, a, it's definitely something that needs to be learned. It's definitely a skill that needs to be developed over time. It's not one of those things where... It's going to happen overnight. You, you, you go to bed and you're like, well, tomorrow I'm just going to think positive and everything's going to be okay. You, you know, it's like you, you, it's, it's a practice, you know, and that's what I got, that's what I got from it. You know, it's like, we talked a lot about teenagers too and how their brains are just developing and we need to like, you know, cut them some slack. Their brains are just developing and set them on the right track, you know, but it was a, that one was a really good one. I, I bought his book. His name is Daniel Siegel. He's an MD and uh, he has some, he has a center in the Southern California area. What I like about that also is, again, there is no magical thinking in terms, like you said, it's not a magical cure like you just go to bed and wake up, ooh, I'm going to be happy. And I think the biggest thing in the, in the studies that I've 
obviously, um, like you said, we both have is a lot of reading and, and research. And, and again, is the biggest thing to point out here is that it is something that we can learn. It is something that is a skill that can be trained. Is the practice is a lot of again is something you're gonna have to do. Like anything, like homework, you have to do homework. These types of things where you're doing the the 30 days, the 60 days, 90 days, it's it's like a habit breaking a habit. Yeah. It's something you have to do daily to rewire the brain. It means yeah. that you're gonna do something, you're gonna have to follow through. A lot of these techniques that they have out there is going to take you as a person following through on a daily basis. If you want something badly enough, there's always a way. It does take commitment on your part to do the rewiring of the brain. Mm -hmm. And does. so if you do want to have a positive mindset, there are ways to change that. And it is, it, our brains, our bodies, are, it's, it's all, a lot of it's chemistry. It's changing the chemistry in your body is changing those neurons' responses. And um, we're, our bodies are amazing tools, like smile. The minute you smile, it changes the mm -hmm. physiology in your body. It's an amazing thing. Yeah. And it's, it's contagion, too. If I smile, even on the screen, guess what happens on the other side of the screen? I smile. Right. Mm -hmm. Kelly feels that. She feels mm -hmm. that. She smiles. No different if you're walking on the street and you smile. The other person that you're passing feels that smile. They start to smile. It's really an interesting thing. No different if I start to yawn, the other side of that screen, guess what happens? Mm -hmm. Right? And uh, yeah. just are beings. This is what happens, and we don't realize that. So just think about that. You can change your negative stinking thinking. Mm -hmm. It's a very thing that is, it's, and it, I know it sounds really hard, but if you really want to do it, there are amazing books out there. Google is an amazing research tool. Yeah. I know a lot of people say, oh, it's so hard. I don't have the resources. I don't have the money. I don't have the time. You know, we're in a society right now with technology. Google is an amazing resource that's free that you can go online. You can find the resources and tools. There's a lot of neurolinguistic programming tools out there that you can find online now that are free. Mm -hmm. There's EFT, right? Mm -hmm. There's tapping that's online for free now. Yeah. <laughs> YouTube. There's yeah. a lot of YouTube free tapping resources out there. So there's a lot of resources now that are for free for people that want to start somewhere. And I encourage everybody to start somewhere. Yeah. So well, and, even, you know, the, and even some of the actual experiences where you, you would go to a workshop that would be, you know, say less expensive, not necessarily the ongoing thing where you can pick up the tools. You know, see, that's what I really enjoyed about going to this conference is it kind of got me back into learning mode and out of coaching and therapist mode for those several days and so it helped to refuel me so even going to if you can't afford a long-term process or to go to an expensive facility or what have you you're right it's like I've I have found so much information on Google and reading articles and subscribing whether it's through Twitter or LinkedIn or you know whatever social uh, network that I'm engaged in I I tend to gravitate towards uh, those who are sharing articles and providing me with this these free tools that you're talking about uh, you know so so to go to a, a conference like this for me was just something additional to what I've been learning I don't claim to be an MD or an expert in neuroplasticity however I can see myself getting to some of those new trainings where I can have some sort of certification doing some of those things because I so enjoy it and I see the benefits of it even in my own life, even in how I have you know been able to transform my thought process. And, and I think that that's where you and I both, Carly, are, are alike in that way is that we've done it because of a personal or physical hardship that we have encountered in our lives. And just because we do it, it's it's not I don't want to say easier but it's just we have a lot more empathy for those that we work with it's like you can do it you can if you choose to but that's the key you got to choose to do it exactly and that that's why I keep on saying when people tell me they don't have the time the resources that's why I brought that up I want I want everyone to know that you know that the time and the money isn't an excuse 
Mm -hmm. um, I encourage everyone that does have the, the resources to go out there and go to conferences and, and do those things because it is, I think, vitally important to always stretch ourselves and to grow and learn. I mean, to me, I mean, learn, playing, and growing is such an important facet of anyone's lives. But I also want to reach out to everybody, to, to people to say they don't have the time and or the money or resources, that there are resources out there for everybody. Well, even like so, your program. You know, your program is offered for free, and they can access it, and it's full of some fantastic material, you know, and that's out there, right? Exactly. That's why I say, I mean, that's, I mean, social media is such a wonderful, wonderful tool. There, you know, videos, YouTube, Vimeo, and again, you know, prescribe to people's blog posts. I'm always putting up wonderful blogs that have, you know, great resources like these videos. And there's um, amazing coaches and programs out there. There are, uh, they do, a lot of people do have sliding scales, reduced fees. People, people that really want to help people, they're always looking for ways to reach out to people and help people. Mm -hmm. So let's get to day two. I'm really excited to hear about day two. What happened on day two? Um, well, are you talking about what we were talking about earlier? Because that was still on day one. Oh, you're still on day one? Okay, let's hear more about day one then. <laughs> oh, well, it's either, it was a long day. Oh, so we're talking about Gene Houston? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So I'll share, I'll share my naive tale a little bit. <laughs> that I had never heard of Gene Houston until... Well, until maybe a couple of months ago, and it really wasn't even a couple of months ago. It was maybe six weeks ago, and you know, it's like my 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 company is Red Slipper Coaching, and I have this you know this whole connection to Dorothy and the Wizard of Oz, and how we're all on this journey and following the yellow brick road, and we meet friends along the way who help us out, and we also cure some obstacles on our life journey, and our friends help us out. We have, you know, but we, once we get to, the, you know, it's, it's the journey, it's the path, and we get to our destination, and it's really more about the journey, not where we're going, and how shoes our metaphors for our changing attitudes, our mindset, our need, what we need at the moment. So this is kind of where I've been floating around and working on for a good year or so, or even maybe even longer, really. I, probably most, actually longer. Probably 10 years ago, I realized the connection to me and Dorothy. And um, so I was out doing a little bit of networking, a little bit of marketing, and sharing with somebody the story and my connection to Dorothy and how, you know, I kind of wrote about a little bit in my book, Heart Lessons, and how Red Slipper was sort of designed around that, but I didn't want to be completely Wizard of Ozzy, so Red Slipper was, was the name of the company. And she says, well, that's really interesting. I just saw a woman on uh, Oprah's Super Soul Sunday who was talking about a book she wrote, something about the Wizard of Oz, and something along the lines of, you know, sounds like kind of where you're at, what you're thinking about. And I, I kind of filed that away in my head. I was like, well, that was very interesting. Didn't really think much more of it until I'm getting ready to go to this conference. Now, we bought the tickets for the conference way back months ago. But you know how it is. It's like you, you get busy with your daily tasks, and as it gets closer to getting to the conference, that's when I really started studying up on what to expect, who's going to be there, what's going to be going on, what can I get myself involved in, and lo and behold, I see this person is going to be there, and her name is Jean Houston, and she wrote a book called The Wizard of Us, and well, of course, you know, I right away, I was like, well, I'm definitely going to that workshop, <laughs> I can't deny that one at all, I got to find out what, what's going on here. Hadn't really known anything about her, but before going, I did a little research on her, because like you said, Google is a great place to get information and to learn stuff, so once I saw that she was going to be at the conference, I started to kind of do a little search on who is she. Found out so much about her, about all the books she's written and all of her history and her background, and then discovered that she's she's uh, the chancellor of a of a university up in Northern California, and she's starting a PhD program in transformational psychology. And I started reading the catalog of what the courses are offered, and it was just very very intriguing. So when I got to the conference, I had made the decision I was going to go to her workshop. And so I got the full experience of Jean Houston in just full, 
mind, body, spirit, education, and, you know, actual seminar workshop, doing some of the exercises. And, uh, you know, and I was able to take away some very key elements that I will implement in some of my own workshops because they go so hand in hand with what my theme was with the sh well she didn't really go much into shoes but she did a lot of other things and so I was like I'm picking and choosing you know it's like oh I wanted something for my for body but I didn't really want it just necessarily I didn't want to run a dance class or an exercise class that's not what I wanted it to be about and she she showed us some exercises to really focus on the five senses and then using those five senses to visualize where you want to go in your life from here and to me even though I had done it before in other exercises it was in this environment at this time in my life as I'm focusing on applying like you said application of what I'm learning out instead of just learning how am I going to apply this to what I want to do it was really exciting to experience that and of course I had to go buy her book and then I went and I chatted with her to have her sign my book. And then I had shared with her that, um, actually I showed her my business card. And I said, I, you know, I'm kind of doing this whole like Dorothy thing too. And of course she's got a million people around her. So she's not really, you know, she's being very gracious. But she says, oh, well, good for you. And I was like, no, you don't get it. The connection that I just, I just couldn't believe that this, you know, this connection happened between her and I. I'm a f firm believer that we're all connected, that there's there's a, you know, a higher consciousness that we're all tapping into. But this particular one was so parallel, it kind of, you know, rocked me a little bit. So anyway, I, uh, I told her that I was very intrigued by this PhD program in transformational psychology because it's a brand new program. They haven't even had the classes yet. The program doesn't even start till February. And she's, she goes like, this, oh! I forgot all about it. I forgot to tell everybody about it. Will you tell people about it while you're here? And I was, how am I, what am, how am I supposed to do that? She goes, tell 50 people. You know, she was like giving me an assignment. <laughs> you know, she goes, tell 50 people about it. So I mean, I got on Twitter and I, and I talked about her program in transformational psychology. And then when I got home, I started absorbing, you know, like we, we talked about, absorbing all of the materials and everything else that I had acquired during the conference. I started reading one of the books and decided, okay, I'm going to put this aside for a little while because I want to read her book. And I'm actually marking up the book and putting little post-its because I am astounded by the parallel of what she's writing and the metaphors and the, you know, the, the mythical journey of Dorothy and and you know and the whole story as she's going through it and the exercises that she has you go through and what I wrote in my own book Heart Lessons and how I have sort of created red slipper coaching around these the same identical concepts I've never met her I had never heard of her I had no idea she was writing this book so how it happened I don't know well, as you know, my logo, my 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 globe, you know, says mm -hmm. we are all interconnected. I mean, yeah. again, now not not everyone believes that, but yeah. I also believe that we are all interconnected. I think you know we are all traveling in some shape or form, and you know, energetically, we're all interconnected. Mm -hmm. And so you know, and we all kind of know about each other, and I think we all sort of intercede or meet the people, the teachers. Mm -hmm. You know, it says. Or you know, saying say when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. Yeah, you didn't know about her before. Yeah, and now all of a sudden you do. So when yeah. you're ready to hear her message, or you know, I, this is a very fascinating thing. A lot of people do not know about. You know, sometimes you read a book and you'll start falling asleep. It'll be a metaphysical book or something that's really intense. But you'll start reading it and you'll fall asleep and you'll start reading it and you'll fall asleep. And that generally means you're not ready to actually hear the message. Then you'll open another book and you'll be reading it. Oh my God. Oh my God! Oh my God! Oh my God! You can't put the book down. You're act it's actually you're ready to receive the message, and it's like it's like this book was written just for me. This book was written just for me. It's like you're reading it and you're resonating with every single thing that's in the book. It's like no one else has ever had that experience but me. But now you're reading it and everything in it's for you, <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. It's because you know it's like we think we're we're so naive to think we're the only one who's been through that experience. Like not. It's like you know. Everybody's been through similar experiences. Mm -hmm. Just in, in that moment, where we're reading the book. That book's just for us, right? Mm -hmm. 
you know. And there could be a thousand books. And, and the thing is, if everyone read the same those thousand books, you'll realize that those thousand books have very common messages, mm -hmm. just written by different people with all the same message. Yeah. Just tweaks differently. Yeah. You know, they all have a different tweak on them, a different slant to them. Mm -hmm. All with the same message, mm -hmm. just different authors. Yeah. And and different people are drawn to them for different reasons. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just that we're again. 20 different co coaches that do all the same thing, mm -hmm. everybody energetically is drawn to the different coach for a different thing. The coach yeah. has a certain personality that they like. doesn't matter if they're male, female, short, tall, whatever weight they are. So that we're all drawn to them for different reasons, for whatever reason that is, just energetically. It, just, their face might be, you know, that draws us to them. Their voice, their tonality, they're faster, they're slower. You know, some people like people that are more hyper. They don't like people that are a little bit too slow, you know, because mm -hmm. they process at a certain rate. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, some people can't deal with people that are really slow and talk really slow because they're really this way, right? I have to be very energetic. So, yeah. and some people like that. Yeah. Now, for other people, I drive them nuts because yeah. I'm very energetic, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm okay with that. That's who I am. So some yeah. people love me. Some people are like, whoa, I can't deal with that. It's like, <laughs> you know, slow down, Carly. You know? I have the same dilemma. My right. Son, I remember, and it's okay. Yeah, I remember being in a job. Yeah, I remember being in a job interview, and I had prepared for this job interview for thirty days, knowing what that that it was coming. I was the only person in the company who had applied for the job. I knew exactly what I thought that they should do. You know, my vision was there, and I get in there, and I thought I nailed the interview. And the, the comment that the CEO said, you've thought a lot about this and you have a lot of energy. You're going to have to not drink so much coffee in the morning. It was that moment that I realized, oh, he's not going to be able to work with me <laughs> because I have way too much energy for this guy. But yet other people, it's like, I've got to ride on the coattails of your energy. I need your energy. And so you're exactly right. It's just like, it's different things for different people. I don't take it personally anymore that you know but uh, the thing with Gene Houston was you know it's like not I know that there's a collective consciousness I know that we're all connected I know that we're, there are certain people along our path that we are destined to meet and she just happened to be one that was like this this big presence that has just just kind of came came to me you know it's like it's not that I'm I'm uneducated or not well read I am I could I could share a whole lot of books with you but that this particular author and this particular individual had sort of you know not was not on my radar and, and so it's this, beautiful it just wasn't meant to be for you at that you know yeah. in that time and space for you I think that's great I love that story yeah. And we want to let everybody know that we are on Intention Radio. Please go check out intentionradio.com. And please do go check out the intentioncall.com that meets every Saturday at 3 p.m. And they have wonderful things that they intend upon. So they have a group meditation and they pick something that they actually meditate and intend upon. And I am really excited to continue this conversation with Kelly. And we are going to continue the conversation on her wonderful aha moments from her conference. So welcome back, Kelly. Thank you very much. Also, I don't want to forget, because I always remember, too, that we are on a podcast. So please let everyone know where they can find you if they are listening to this podcast. Where they can find me. Oh, yes, I am at www.redslippercoaching.com. I, uh, I also do a podcast. You can find all sorts of free guidance on my website. And I uh, would love to have you as part of the Red Slipper community. We send out uh, you know, weekly Monday morning emails on tips for mind, body, and spirit. Wonderful. So let's continue your journey on your conference that you were just at. Okay. Um, well, there was, you know, it, this was the evolution of psychotherapy, and it's put on by the Erickson Foundation. You know, Erickson was was one of the, you know, founders of method of psychotherapy, and so there's all sorts of different workshops, lectures, conversations that you can, you know, attend. 
a lot of people who are there who have written books on one topic or another and you can experience that let it, listen to them share about their book and their theories uh, there was even some you know some individuals that shared how to write for the public as opposed to writing for other therapists to do therapeutic techniques which for me was also very interesting because uh, you know, I'm an author and I love to write and, you know, Heart Lessons Volume 2 is on my, you know, on my goal list to start it next month. So it was it was a very fascinating uh, conference. Of course, myself, I was, I was drawn to all of the, um, you know, the brain science, the mind, the mindfulness, those types of of uh, lectures and workshops, whereas my colleagues that I had gone gone with were interested in some of the uh, you know children's therapies and you know domestic violence or marriage counseling or ADHD and some of those other themes. So there was there was really something for everybody at this conference. And uh, you know what I got out of it was a lot of a lot of time to sort of you know relearn, uh, reflect and redirect. Oh, I just came up with that. All those R's. <laughs> <laughs> It's amazing what I can do on the fly these days. Wow. So. Yes, you're doing great on the fly these days. <laughs> Let's get into day two. Well, day two, let me I'm looking at my calendar here and what I what I did. Oh, yeah, I did I did take a course on like basic hypnosis techniques. Now let's admit it, hypnosis is a lot like meditation. A lot like self meditation where you where you guide yourself into visualization not necessarily a trance where you're going, you know, backwards in time, but you're just, you know, you're just bringing up some memories that were, you know, kind of deep inside of you. But it's also an opportunity to just to kind of relax and put yourself into a different state or a different consciousness. Um, and and a lot of the purposes is just, you know, a lot of times to help somebody with anxiety or to help them, you know. Um, uh, learn to relax and you know stress release and things like that and this was I am not a hypnosis expert uh, this was just a, a, a basically a demonstration on hypnosis and I was it was very interesting the intonations the how how he sort of asked the probing questions but there was a tone to it there was a very calming voice where it was very tempered and there was a there was a, a rhythm to it and it was you know now you're going to you know you're gonna do this and you can do that and he they had us actually it was the strangest thing try to do it on somebody that we were sitting next to and of course they uh, they say it's like just experiment with somebody that you don't know knowing that you're never going to see them again so it doesn't matter if you're good or bad <laughs> you know which which kind of like helped everybody kind of like feel like okay it doesn't really matter because I'm never going to see you again but the thing was is like how are you supposed to try to do relaxation and hypnotic type of techniques in a room full of people who are also doing the same thing so when you say you can you can tune out to the the ambient noise around you, no, you couldn't. But we learned it's like basically the the instructions for inducing a hypnotic state are more about you know truths. So you're you're giving them all sorts of truths so that they can agree. So that gets them into a welcoming state and a, and you know a state where they can then they're more willing to be open to what it is that they are seeking and, and that was what was really interesting to me this was not a you know a circus act where they were hypnotizing people and having them do you know silly acts on stage that's that's for the carnivals that's for the county fairs that's not what hypnosis is all about so that was one of the that was one of the very interesting ones I think I went to like two or three on hypnosis and I bought a book on just kind of like the basics just to and for my purposes I would tend to not necessarily go into deep hypnosis with clients, but to just give them some tools to help them if they're if they're in a state of stress or they're in a state of, of alarm or anxiety that kind of to help to bring them to a state of calm where they can practice these skills which are very much like meditation, really. It's it's a lot like meditation, but it's sort of like guided. Yeah. Yeah, so hypnosis is a wonderful thing. I actually am a certified 
hypnotic person. I like I like hypnotics instead of hypnosis. But anyways, it is it is all about it is a boil it um what it boils down to is to do hypnosis in a proper way to get people really into the hypnotic state. It is also um what I find the best way, it is all about timber, tonalities, like you said. Um, it is voice. And um, the, I think for people, it is really great for simpler things, anxiety, like you said, stress. You can use it for deeper things. And you tend to best, I love using it with NLP. NLP combined with hypnotics is the best combination because you can work out a lot of different things. But it really is all about the voice. Because it's it's just it's kind of like putting someone to sleep, and you can actually play with it. You can do you can do it on yourself. Mm -hmm. um, you can do it with affirmations. You can do it with all sorts of neat tools. You can even do it with music. Um, there's so many neat ways you can use hypnosis. Um, but it is a wonderful, wonderful tool. Um, people have used it, as you know, for all sorts of things now. There's so many hypnosis tapes out there for whether it be for releasing weight or for for you know, ceasing smoking or for any sort of habits or what have you. But it is great for just even being in a car, you know, before you, you're stuck in a parking lot, before you get out of you know, leaving your office or you've been stressed. I think the greatest tool for people before they even go home, let's mm -hmm. say you've had a really stressful day at work, before mm -hmm. you go home and take it out on your family or your kids, sit in your car and just do some deep breathing. And, and even deep breathing is in effect a way Mm -hmm. of self-hypnosis. Mm -hmm. You know, it's kind of funny. We didn't even realize that a lot of the techniques that are actually they're actually self-hypnosis, if you will, is mm -hmm. the deep breathing. Yeah. Deep breathing is a part of hypnosis. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a lot of tools that are actually, people don't even know they're already doing on themselves, which is a part of, of, of self-hypnosis. Yeah. Um, the deep breathing is a start of self-hypnosis, and there's a lot of little techniques. But yes, yeah, self-hypnosis, I think, is a great tool to teach people. Um, it's a very valuable tool for clients. So I encourage mm -hmm. anybody to actually go get a tape, or not tape, I'm sorry, a video on techniques on learning how to do self-hypnosis. And, of course, there's a lot of also, uh, cl you know, claims dis uh, not to do hypnosis and then drive. So make sure that before you actually put your hands on the steering wheel and drive, that you're fully, fully conscious awake. Yeah, exactly. fully conscious awake yeah. before you actually go driving. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it is a great, great, great tool. Yeah, it really is. I I enjoyed that. Um, you know, and in and, and in these you know in these contexts, which was nice, was that they actually did demonstrations. So it wasn't just you know speaking about the benefits and then a PowerPoint, you know, like some slides on what to do. We actually were were experiencing it and actually watching how it happened, and then hearing from the hip hypno <laughs> <laughs> you know, when, with the subject of, of what the experience was like. And so this is, these are kinds of things that you don't always often get to see, you know, which was really interesting. Did, did they do the self-hypnosis one where they actually hypnotized you, yourselves as a group, where you had the one hand drop just so you can feel yourselves being hypnotized? Um, they didn't really, not with the one hand drop, but it was more about, you know, sort of like a relaxation to get us sort of grounded in the room. And it was more about feeling the sensation of the back of your chair, feeling your feet on the floor, you know, like those kinds of things. We didn't really do our hand, but, but he did the whole group thing where he just sort of just like caused us all to relax and sort of like shut, shut out anything else that had been going on outside that room. But of course, we're talking about a room full of, you know, there was at least a thousand to fifteen hundred people in the room. You know, yeah, it's really cool when they have like, like literally that big size room, like one thousand, two thousand people, and they have they do they self hypnotize the whole group and just have you do the where you lift your hand and the hand drops, so you can just experience that one thing of the that mm -hmm. hypnosis where you can actually feel that you yourself can be hypnotized just to do that one hand movement, so you can mm -hmm. feel that that so it just teaches you that you yourself can be hypnotized. Yeah, and it's really, it's a real simple thing, but it, it really gets you go wow that you, know, you can actually feel the power of that. It's yeah. really cool exercise. Yeah, yeah, very nice. Um, let me see. I, I did more on brain. I saw Doctor Oh Daniel Amen was there. Doctor Amen, 
from the mm -hmm. Avon clinics. He was there. Um, I went to one where it was just a, like a one-hour conversation, so it was more less of a, a presentation and more of, you know, it's like, hey, here, here's what I do, and uh, ask me some questions. You know, so it was that was very cool, and of course that one once again we're talking about more brain science. Um, you know, you obviously you're smiling, so you're perfectly aware of Dr. Amen. <laughs> you have nothing to say there, okay? <laughs> All right. uh, he's, he's just—I mean—he's a brilliant, brilliant person. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what else did I go to? I had so many that I wanted to go to. Um, there was a. Oh, I didn't think I'd go there. I went to, let's see, there's a bunch of, there was a, so many cool things, and I'm looking at this here. Um, of course, then there was stuff about the evolution of psychotherapy and how, you know, it, it, there was a lot of, a lot of focus is going towards the mind, body, spirit. So, uh, you know, it's like I have noticed this myself, which is part of, you know, it's like not necessarily why I chose to go this direction. I was going in this direction, and that's why I went back to school. But what I discovered at this conference is that that seems to be the direction, once again, we're talking about the collective consciousness, the direction that a lot of therapy is going. Um, and I think that it's really fair and really prudent to say to your audience to let them know that you, know, you don't have to be afraid to go get help because really all that it's about is helping you to get to be all that you are capable of being because there might be something that's holding you back or something that's that's blocking you from actually achieving that that happiness or that greatness within you and a lot of you know a lot of mental health professionals as well as coaches are going towards that direction where it's you know therapy isn't about sitting on a couch and having somebody tell you all of the things that are wrong with you you know, it's like whenever I'm out and about, and not at a conference like this, but out in the general population, and someone asks, what do you do? I'm a therapist and a coach, among other things. And they're like, oh, therapy. Yeah, we could all use some of that, can't we? I can't tell you how many times I hear this over and over and over again. I'm like, well, come on down. I'll be happy to therapize you. Uh, but, but it's more about... Being and, and this is what I share with my clients, whether they're coaching clients or therapy clients, I share with them, it's like, this is more about what you want to get out of it. And there is nothing more courageous and nothing more bold and nothing more brave than asking for help. And I have had to learn this again. And admittedly, that I too ha think that I should have all the answers. And I, too, have had to ask for help on many occasions. And this sort of reinforced with me that it's okay to go out and learn things and talk to people and experience new, new, you know, new, new forms of education. And so I just wanted, you know, it's like, so what I learned from this is that this evolution of psychotherapy, and here, you know, there was, peop there was, there was speakers and authors talking a lot about the mind body spirit connectedness and how it is all connected you know the physiology of the brain affects the how the body responds you know and the body responds to how the the spirit is reacting and how you think affects the way you behave and affects the way you feel and if you know it's like if one isn't one isn't functioning you know in in you know in, in with the with the rest I'm looking for the the connected word here um, help me out, Carly. <laughs> they help me out. <laughs> okay, so it's all interconnected, meaning yeah. if the mind, body, and I'm going to put one more in here, the mind, body, business spirit, because people, yeah. don't, and I'm putting the business in here for a reason. I get people all the time as clients, and they wonder why their business isn't thriving. If your mind is, is not in balance, if your body is not in balance, and your spirit is not in balance, if one of those three are not in you're slightly out of balance, it does affect your business. And they don't get that. You know, they all have to be in balance. And, if, and, and I'll put another one in there. Your family. If something's going on in your family or in a, in a relationship, a man, whatever relationship you have as a boy and girl in a relationship, okay, if, that's, if you're fighting with your partner, if you're fighting with your partner, 
it's going to affect your family. If you're fighting with your partner, it's going to affect your business, right? Yeah. So if you're having family problems or even just mom and dad are having problems, that's going to affect your children. All these things are interrelated. And then, and then on top of that, you got your mind, your body, right, your mm -hmm. spirit, and your business. Yeah. All those things are interrelated. So if any one of those things are out of sync, it's going to affect one of all those things. <laughs> and then yeah. they wonder why their business is suffering. And they're like, well, well just because I'm fighting with my wife, how is that going to affect my business? How come that, that doesn't going to affect my business. Well, guess what? Yes, it does because then that affects your mood. You walk into your office, you're cranky, which affects you know your productivity of the people that work for you. I mean, it's it's like what well, I'm going to put in there, the ripple effect. Mm -hmm. Everything is a ripple effect. Whatever you do is a ripple effect. What you say becomes, you know, then falls into your actions, mm -hmm. right? Your actions become your ripple effect. Yeah. Well, and, and like, and, 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 you know, it's like from, from my personal experience, I, you know, I learned this when I had my, my health crisis, my heart troubles, you know, I, it, it took a while, but, and I write about it in my, in, in heart lessons that realizing that my response, even though I was the one who was having the physical illness, I was the one who's, who was suffering with that particular aspect, but so was everybody else around me. My business was affected by my body issue, you know, my, my physical, my health, my family life was, my financial life was, how my children were responding to me, how I was responding to them, and everything else. It was all interconnected. And it wasn't until... I had to make the decision, okay, I can't let everything fall apart. So there was nothing I could do about my physical health except to take care of it. So that's where the body came from. I just had to do what I had to do. I couldn't control the time frame, but I could do what I could do. But my mind I had to start focusing on and my spirit I had to start focusing on and get them into balance and that's when I started learning and reading and absorbing new information and that's how it happened and the connectedness came from just finding an online community of actually it was a bunch of women who all had heart troubles so I found a community who I related to and they could relate to me and then we shared our problems our issues and so that's another thing that that you know are the viewers and the listeners of this program you know can take into account whatever it is that's going on in your life somebody out there is also going through it and you can find them and then you can form a collaboration or a, a support circle or you know whatever it is to help you get through it but it does affect absolutely everything you're right mind body business spirit yeah. yeah, it does. It's it's, and that's why I, I you know, when I finally did my logos, I, I mean, people are like, you can't put business in with mind, body, spirit. That's just, you know, that's just wrong. That's just not right. You can't put business in with mind, body, spirit. I'm like, I do because I'm, I'm, I'm a consultant. I'm a coach, and I coach people on business, and mind, body, spirit is interrelated, and it's, and it's because of those things that their business is suffering. So that's why I finally started including including that in my in my logos. Yeah. Um, and you know, for me, it was very interrelated. I do want to let everyone know that we are on Intention Radio, and so please go check out intentionradio.com, and please go check out theintentioncall.com on Saturdays at 3 p.m. Please join in on their group meditations. We are coming to the end of our program, so I do want to make sure you let to let everyone know where they can find the beautiful Kelly. So, um, Kelly, please let everyone know where they can find you once again. Well, my name is Kelly Orchard, just like fruit trees, and you can find me at redslippercoaching.com. And um, I have webinars, workshops, podcasts. I have a book called Heart Lessons. Uh, I really love speaking to the heart. The heart is more than just a metaphor for me or a physical attribute. It is all-encompassing. So I would love to have you be part of the Red Slipper community. And um, let's touch upon one more, let's see, another one of the things that you enjoy. What, what, what is, out of all the days, what would you say was the best place you visited? Or, you know, in other words, you obviously went to a few more 
places. Oh, yeah, which it, yeah it's, a, it's still sort of a blur. I'm still going through all of my notes. Um, but I think that for me, it was sort of the culmination on the very last day because I was able to spend more time in the, in the bookstore. And then I ran into a colleague of mine whom I hadn't seen in about a year. We worked at another agency together. And I hadn't seen her in a while. And she came up to me. I was actually at the Heart Math booth, uh, getting some information on Heart Math. I love Heart Math. I, I love know that. I did too. I had learned about them a long time ago, and I and I was so glad to actually talk to physical people. And I got their brochures and you know and, and all that. So it's like I'm going to be studying the Heart Math program and offering that as well. But when I ran into her, it's like we stopped everything. We went and sat down, and we just kind of chit-chatted and got kind of like really caught up. And she went to work for another agency, and about and, and about six months later, I left the agency that we were working at together. But what occurred during that conversation was, you know, some when we're immersed in our own progress, and even though we are setting goals and we're achieving those goals and we're taking it one step at a time, our time frame seems like, oh, it's taking so long to get there, to get to where I want to be. This journey is so long. And even I can get caught up in that. But when I saw her, and this is, I hadn't seen her in a year, and I tell her from the timeline of when I w left this agency to what I have done since up until this point, she was amazed. She could not believe how much I had personally accomplished in this six month window. And what it did was it helped shine the light onto me that even though in my perspective the journey is taking a really long time, from other people's perspective it's amazing how much you accomplished. And I just wanted to just wanted to kind of share that positive reaction. It was a personal thing for me, but it was so very profound and powerful that when I look at my own clients, I want to constantly remind them this may seem to you that it's taking so long as you practice and take each step and sometimes you have a setback but that's okay you're gonna take that step again tomorrow and, and then another day and each step that you take you're getting further along the journey towards actualization authenticity happiness whatever whatever you're seeking you're getting there and somebody else is gonna look at you three months six months one year down the line and they're gonna think it happened overnight and it's just it was just a very profound and powerful thing to happen on the very last day of the conference that I ran into this colleague. Don't you love when that happens? Oh it, yeah. It, it's so true because again, perception is uh, in a weird way is illusion. <laughs> it's like what we don't get is again every I can show one picture just to you know twenty different people and everyone's gonna see something different in that picture. Our perception of self is so different than other people's perception of us, mm -hmm. and and our and time is an illusion, if you will. <laughs> so you know, again, we, when what we see is so different from others. So when people see what we've accomplished, is going to be very different from what we think we've accomplished. So it is a very very powerful lesson. And yeah. I think that must have felt so good to hear. It did. It actually, it, it actually invigorated me, uh, you know, and encouraged me to just continue, continue on this path, no matter what's what I think is going on, you know. And there's always there's always a new door opening and a new opportunity just around the corner, and uh, and that just helped to reinforce it. And I think that we all, all of us, need somebody in our lives to reinforce uh, where we're going and where we've been, and our and help us celebrate our successes, how, no matter how small we think they are. That somebody else might look at it as a huge success. So, what would be the second biggest thing that you've learned from this conference coming out of there? Oh, the second biggest thing, and this is kind of a funny thing, is that three therapists go to a conference together and they get lost in town, and they it would take forever for them to find their way back because they would constantly be asking probing questions and processing how the other one feels about being lost. <laughs> and this truly happened. I, w I was with my, my my colleagues, and we were you know we're driving around, and we're, we we're getting lost. And it's like, which way are we supposed to go? I don't know. How do you feel about being lost right now? And I'm like, you know what? We together we will figure it out. 
<laughs> that's just my little my little comical takeaway. So. Well, you know, it's, and the funny thing is, being in a group in a car with a group of therapists, what else did you expect? Yeah, exactly. And I wanted to, I wanted to, I wanted to like make it into like a presentation joke, like two therapists and a coach are <laughs> are driving around, and the two therapists are trying to process each other's feelings. The coach is sitting in the back seat, and the coach sits forward and says, "Hey, how about we just pull over and ask directions?" <laughs> <laughs> that would have been brilliant. <laughs> I'm going to use it, I swear. <laughs> you, know? you need to write that one down. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, true story, though. It did really happen. I was the one driving and trying to navigate at the same time. And okay. my friends were, so. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, that is brilliant. Well, as usual, it has been wonderful having you. I can't wait to have you again. I'm sure we'll be having plenty of conversations. I have a feeling it's going to become a regular thing. <laughs> I hope so. This is really fun. I love it. And, and of course, with our technology troubles earlier since Google Hangouts have once again decided to elude me with their new technological changes. Thank you, Google. I really appreciate your changes. Anyways, as everyone knows, I do put together a wonderful page that will have Kelly's podcast and the video and you'll be able to find all her links and her information. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to join us. I look forward to sharing more wonderful information with you next week. If there's anything you would like to hear about, please let us know. I also love feedback, so be sure to leave us some. For today, it is good night. I hope you have a wonderful evening. Blessings to everyone, and I look forward to sharing with you next week. Have a wonderful evening, everybody. Good night. And Thank you so much once again. It was a delight. Thanks for having me.